So the other day I was on Facebook and somebody asked me about making a ski basket. And they were asking about using um, bullines to cut holes through the basket. And I thought, well, you don't really need to do that. The basket has um, five sides, and so I've cut it into 25 sides, which gives me five um, pieces to each of the five sides. So first I made the circle, and now I'm extruding it in and giving myself some quads. And it's good to keep these quads um, fairly the same size, because then you can unwrap them more easily. Although in this case, we don't really need to unwrap it. So the next thing to do is to erase. And you can see here I erase one too many points. I'll have to go back and repair that later. But then I count over five and then erase the next one. And the same thing all the way around. So now that I've selected all of them, I erase them. And I want to make sure I've got them all even, so I just counted to the end. And I'm erasing only the vertices. And then I look down and I realize I've got two big holes. Which is actually good for this video. I go and I take a look at the what the person wants. Um, and there's these big holes. So I could just press 3, which I do, and then go through and select them with Shift. And then I remove the faces. And I guess this is where I realize there's a hole. Anyway, once I do realize there's a hole, then I just um, go into Vertex Select by pressing 1 and Extrude, which is the E key. And then I select both sides, and I use F for fill. And then I fill this other line here, and then I fill everything. There might be a faster way to do that. It probably is, but I don't really care. I'm just doing this really quickly, and it thought it was a good excuse to show off the uh, extrude function and the fill function. So now that's all finished. The next thing I want to do is add subsurface. And this will round it out. You can see how the edges are becoming round. And then in the original, these corners here were fairly sharp. And so I'm going to go through and select all of these corners. But only the edges. And so now they're all selected. And now I go over here to the crease. And you can see as I put the crease to 1, it pulls them sharply into the corners and gets rid of that kind of beveled look around the edge that I didn't want. And here I'm doing Control-Alt-Shift, uh, I believe, yeah. And then 1, which makes these, theoretically, will make these into circles. they're already pretty good but I just want to make sure they're all the same and you can see how it pulls it down a little bit and makes it a little more circular Now I scale everything up, and I actually type in the number I want to scale because I want to be able to do it the same for all of them. I could have just selected um, a different way of scaling it, but this was the fastest, easiest way. So I'm scaling everybody, everything by 1.5.
and there we go all the holes are of the right size I'm going to object mode I'm gonna see if I like it and now I'm gonna make it thick so I go down to solidify modifier add that see the edge to see how fat it is and now I'm just sitting here trying to think how fat was this thing last time I went skiing and that's obviously ridiculously fat looks like a noodle so that's still too fat and now it's starting to look much more like a real ski basket would look the other thing you'll notice about ski baskets is that they're um, normally kind of uh, sphere shaped and so I want to do the select this inner ring of points with alt and now they're all selected I always click and select one vertice before I do that otherwise you'll have some vertice randomly also selected which isn't good and now I bring this up the um, circle isn't big enough so I start scrolling to make the um, and then I realize oh I didn't actually turn it on so I do it again and there we go the whole thing is moving up but I don't really like the form so I think I make the circle a little smaller now yeah and that gives us this really cool looking octopus shape yeah what I'm thinking that looks pretty good it's maybe a little too thick still and I think I'll add bevel and as soon as I click on this bevel you can see my computer goes completely to sleep um, I need to get a new graphics card I'm running a 580 GTX Nvidia card and uh, I want to move up to a, a 980 Ti because they're actually pretty good price and they use twice as much electricity as the 1080 Ti but they also cost less than half as much so if I were rich, I'd be buying a, a, a 2080, but I don't have $1,200 laying around for a new graphics card. Wish I did. Wish I had enough for two of them. But uh, I think a, you know, a 980 will work with Blender 2.8, whereas the, the 580 no longer works. So everything you see here is running on the CPU. And there seems to be a bug um, I'm not positive it's a bug, but I think there's a bug right now in 2.8 2 that's causing this massive slowdown. I've seen some people chatting about it on Facebook. So basically I just have to wait here until it finally recognizes. And I'm sitting here trying to figure out why in heck it's taking so long. In the past I never had these type of problems, so I'm kind of confused by it. And there it goes. Finally registered what's going on. And now I'm thinking to get out of this, this bug that maybe I should apply the thickness or apply the, the subsurface. And uh, eventually I just decide, I believe, to take away the bevel. But once again, the computer is really, really slow. And you can see now because of the crease, how I'm getting this weird fat edge and um, thin sharp edge which doesn't look very good and I left all this in because a lot of times you see uh, a tutorial and people are just um, sitting there and showing you everything step by step perfectly because they've done 15 takes of it I'm just doing this live it's this is the third time I tried to do the shape uh, the first time I tried to do the shape I only divided it into five pieces that didn't work out and so then I tried uh, 10 cuts that didn't work out and then I realized I needed 25 segments to make my circle come out really nicely and crisply crisply but other than that this is just first take no editing and it shows you how um, as you work you have to problem solve you don't just know what's going on you don't know instantly every time what's perfect you know when you watch like Andrew Price's videos and he just types in all the correct numbers for all the settings on particles and shaders and it just all looks wonderful 
every now and then you get a glimpse of his computer and you'll see where he has 15 or 16 takes where he's redone his video over and over and over to make it look that perfect. In reality, you're doing what I'm doing now, problem solving, checking things, testing things, looking at it. It's really good when you're doing this process to avoid rendering because rendering can take 15 minutes and every time you render something, you're wasting 15 minutes. It's way better to avoid rendering. Um, this is where Eevee comes in. Eevee is wonderful because it can just instantly show you what's going on and then you can render one time a night. That's reasonable. So yeah, now I'm liking it. It's looking pretty good. Later I went in and, and played around with it some and actually removed these creases and put in um, a few more edges, edge loops. And by pulling an edge loop down there to the end of, of the star, um, it'll tighten up that curve also. And it turned out to be a, a much nicer looking way to do it than the crease. Because no matter how much you play with a crease, it doesn't ever really look wonderful. But it's not bad. Right now I'm trying the crease on just the corners there, which actually looks pretty good, but it's kind of sharp and dangerous looking. I don't think I'd actually want that on my ski pole. I'd be in danger of killing some snow turtles or something. I have my computer set up so that it rotates on the selected uh, object, which I find to be a really, really useful setting. It also zooms into where the mouse is as opposed to just zooming into the middle point. I also like that feature a lot. You can see as I change the number how that edge goes in there, it becomes really sharp. And here I back it off just a little bit to make it rounded. In case you're wondering what the background noise is, my Daegu's decided that it's time for a run. So that's it for the video. As always, please support me on Patreon, check out my other videos, subscribe, click the little bell so you get notifications, um, share on Facebook, you know the whole typical routine. And thank you guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks. Bye.